been honoring Thich Nhat Hanh, her teacher from the Buddhist practice since he passed this past week. So the this is called Present Moment, Wonderful Moment. And it's really just a compilation of inspirational cards with a single mantra on them. And then lovely little couple of paragraph commentary from him. So I want to introduce this mantra. It's breathing, which fits right in. It's simple enough to adjust. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, <clears throat> I know this is a wonderful moment. And not contrary to this mantra, but in anatomy, our breathing in is actually just the slightest activation to our nervous system, an igniting of the fire, an engaging of effort. The diaphragm contracts. It's the breathing out that transitions us into the parasympathetic, the easeful state of healing, of digesting, of recovering from the effort of living our days. And yet I love that he's, in essence, reversed these two energies because the body will take care of this shift of the nervous system. If we can embrace the mindset of being present. In other words, the body will activate while we think of calming the body, which is just a little bit more of a preemptive permission so that when we exhale, we trust. And in that trust, perhaps a smile can spread across your lips and up your cheeks into your eyes. And from your eyes, can it penetrate to your soul? The windows of our soul, they say, the Atman in our yoga tradition. Continue to breathe in and out, maybe slowing the tempo and evening out the inhale and the exhale. In our busy society, Thich Nhat Hanh says, it is a great fortune to be able to breathe consciously from time to time. Our body and mind become calm and concentrated, bringing us joy, peace, and ease. We can breathe consciously any time during the day. Breathing in, I calm my body. This line is like drinking a cool glass of water. You feel the freshness permeating your body. When I breathe in and recite this line, I actually feel the breathing calming my body and mind. Breathing out, I smile. Smile can relax hundreds of muscles in your face and make you master of yourself. This is why the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas are always smiling, dwelling in the present moment. While I sit here, I don't think of anything else. I sit here and I know where I am. I know this is a wonderful moment. It is a joy to sit stable and at ease and return to ourselves, our breathing, our half smile, our true nature. We can appreciate these moments. We can ask ourselves, if I don't have peace and joy right now, when will I have peace and joy? Tomorrow or after tomorrow? What is preventing me from being happy right now?
breathing in to calm my body. Breathing out to smile. Let's find our way out to our bellies. Whether you prop your head up hands or shoulders above elbows, or even as I'm demonstrating here, feet on some bolster or lift. Take a few breaths and let the front body open. That might mean that you alternate lifting one leg and then the other as the body opens to this passive back bend. Breathe in and calm my body. And breathe out and smile. Wherever your head has landed, so to bring a gentle sway or rock. It might be more of a swivel, more of a tilt, depending on the orientation of your head to the earth. Head come to steady, fold the knees and sway the ankles from side to side. So rocking over the flesh and the top of your front thighs. You might feel the swivel of your thigh bone in your hip socket. If you don't feel that swivel, that's okay. It's a little bit of a practice to feel these more subtle shifts. That might just take some time not unlike developing our tastes for foods or for drink, but we can strengthen them through practice to become super tasters or super smellers. In yoga, we're invited to become super feelers. Let the knees come together. Maybe the thighs can touch as the ankles fall wide. We're bringing some traction into the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint, the back side of your pelvis. And then in that rest, that heaviness of the V shape, circle the ankles, wiggle your toes, tilt, point, flex, move the feet. The weight of the feet are enough to bring that beautiful opening, that stretch, of the stable joint, the stabilizing joint of the pelvis is bone connections. Releasing the feet towards the bolster or the floor, tuck the toes under, extend out through one heel, soften and reverse to the other side. Lengthening the back side of the leg by activating the squeeze to the front side of your thigh, essentially extending and gently bending the knee, but also adding a little more movement through the hip flexors, the gluteal firing of the buttocks. The last round. And then relax the feet and the legs using your hands wide or your elbows planted. Start to scroll alternatingly through the shoulders. Letting the elbows move as much as they want to open up that both horizontal and vertical flow the gliding 
of your shoulder blade, your scapula. Walking those elbows in underneath the shoulders, root down through the elbows as you rise through the crown, lift the chin, intensifying that front body, reach, and then drop the chin, lift the navel, lift the belly, concave the upper back, coming into your cat, and back down and through to a variation of cow. As you are ready to release this belly pose, you can inchworm your way back or roll over to the side body, folding at the hips, the knees, bowing over your body to child's pose. Right arm draws back towards the body. Left arm walks long away in the opposite direction. As you inhale, lift the knees or lift the bum with the knees, swinging that right arm up and over like a big crawl stroke to a table pose. And then switch, sinking back towards child's. The left arm draws back, load up through the hips and swim that arm up and over. Take your time, synchronizing the movements with your breath. Inhale, calm the body. Exhale, smile. Two more. And planting the hands just a little bit longer down your back. This is a spinal flock, so it's less muscular and more working into that nervous, nervous, that nervous system and spinal column. So as the hips drop forward, feeling a little bit like an up dog, drop the chin to the chest. You are lengthening and tugging up through the spinal cord. And then as we fold back, option to tuck the toes for a little more. As the hips sink back towards child, the chin lifts up and away. So it's pulling down through the spinal cord. Rocking forward, chin drops, pulling up. Can we get as many as two to four centimeters of movement here? A couple of inches as we free up the fascial fusion that holds the spinal cord in the well, the hole of the spinal column. And as you sink back through your knees, go ahead and scroll all the way up to a sun breath, rising, lifting, opening up. At the top, one hand finds the opposite wrist, lengthen. And if there's room, take that into a bit of a side bow. Okay. Right to the second side, switch hands. And bow. Back up to center, release the hands, maybe making a fist or binding the hands, 
Lifting the heart by squeezing the shoulder blades and the elbows in, a bit of a camel lift. Release, I'm gonna inch form this all the way out. So open the arms wide into a sun breath. As you come down, skip this if you're not feeling strong. Reach out through the hands, shift forward to elbows, chest, all the way down to the belly. Exhale, rise in your cobra. Lower into a rep. Three more, exhale, rise into cobra. Lower inhale and rest. Three, one more. Good, inchworm. Again, the hands are gonna be tight to the side body, but it's low down your torso as you can. Squeezing in, pressing down through the heels of the hand, drag the body back, elbows down. It takes a lot of triceps work. Rest in child's pose, or wrap the arms around into yoga mudra, binding, perhaps even lifting the hands towards the ceiling. Well done. Release and rise to your table. Opening for a threaded needle, one arm extends out and up. Elbow is softly bent to keep that chest open. Tuck and thread the arm underneath the body. Inhale, up and open once again. On the exhale, I smile. Thread that arm. And three. Two. Last one. And pause, three big breaths. And as you unwind, sway the hips with the hands supported underneath the shoulders. Waking up a little bit more into the gluteal, the outside glute medius, the lower of the board portion of the buttocks, the glute maximus. Maybe arcing into a bit of a half circle. Second side, thread the needle. Again, we've got five repetitions and then hold for a breath for three. Inhale to open. Exhale to tuck and thread. Your bum might be high towards the air or it might be low towards the heels of your feet. What's most comfortable for your weight bearing in that front arm and as the head and shoulder come down to touch the earth. And after your fifth one, I've lost track. I don't know if this is five or six, but it's one or the other. Rest and take three to five breaths. Done. Right, again, scooting back and up through your sun breath. Unwind your torso. Slowly scroll and rise. Sun breath the arms. Option once again here, take it out to cobra lift. Scoop it down. Shift onto forearms, chest. Make it all the way down. Exhale and rise. Cobra. Three more. Lifting on that exhale, which is contrary to traditional teachings for this shape, is intended to bring the muscles into the practice without relying on the movement of the breath within the body to make this lift possible. So notice how much of it is just moving of air, how much of it is muscular contraction. As you fold back, here's your chance to have your toes lift to downward dog. Inching back, protects those shoulders. When the shoulder is both weight-bearing and in a full extension or stretch place, it's more at risk of injury. So by transitioning, moving our weight, and then moving our joints or vice versa, 
helps keep that shoulder joint healthy, strong, and stable. From table or downward dog, step one foot forward into a low lunge. As you inhale, calm the body, but lift the mind and the heart. And then smile as you bring the body down. Then inhale. One more time here. As you lift, choose if you'd like to tuck the toes or to lift that base knee, finding just a little more muscular effort. I'm still not on weight bearing in my left foot, so I visualize that lift to feel the engagement of my thighs and my abdominal core. And then either keeping that knee up or down, bring the hands into a twist, hands to the floor, maybe one to the knee. Maybe even reaching around to say hello between hand and foot. So I'm twisting towards opposite hand, reaching towards that foot. Let's fire its pocket to us. Let's release one and take it back. Again, downward dog. A table, or if you really like to move through that vinyasa flow, feel free to move through vinyasa flow. Now I am non weight bearing on my second side, my left foot. So instead of stepping my foot forward, I'm going to flip on over to make essentially that shape on my back, right? So the lunge. And then inhale and rise. And exhale. Inhale, I calm my body. Exhale, I smile. So, as we climb through that lunge, choose the level of effort. And even here on my back body, I can engage my muscles as if I'm pressing down through my feet, squeezing in through my thighs, finding that expression of joy, of happiness, smiling at the effort that I'm inviting into my body. And release and twist. So find twist, much like the lunge twist, right? Good job. So you unwind. Walk that foot wide. So you're coming into a little bit more of a lizard, or as I'm doing, a half happy baby. Just allowing the knee to fall open, maybe even stepping onto the outside edge. Knee fall wide. If you're in an upright position, bring the back foot forward into your squat. And bring me into the happy baby variation. Take a breath. Maybe the elbows press into the thighs. The thighs squeeze into the elbows. The heart opens and the head lifts straight out of the spine. Soften and switch. So now we're back to the first leg. Foot widens if it needs to. Knee can fall out into this lizard variation same orientation of the limbs as half happy baby transitioning once again bringing that back foot up to your squat your malasana catch yourself from the back side and sit to sway the knees. Now this, the shape of your bones may make that more or less comfortable for that kind of transition. So transition however your body needs to move. From this, we're gonna drop the knees and twist the torso, reaching around towards the back. Another twist, come back to the front and second side twist.
lower into your spine. Do this with as much abdominal control as you'd like. So you can hover and lower slowly or support and lower gently. Coming down to find one more long body stretch. Maybe the fingers temple, meaning the first two fingers come together. Reaching through the toes, through the midsection, through your fingers. And then softening, let the legs perhaps spread, the elbows fall open, savasana. to begin again this day. Use this breath as the doorway it is to link the mind and the body, reanimating the limbs, reawakening the attention of the mind, the intellect, the emotion, the story, and the wisdom. Roll the ankles and the wrists, bend the knees and the elbows. Maybe rock the head, and then rolling to one side, take a breath and once again, breathe in and calm your body. Breathe out and smile. Perhaps it's a gratitude for these few moments of self-care, connection, and breathing. As you rise to your final seat, bring the hands together. Breathing in, calm my body. Breathing out, smile. Breathing in, I practice receiving everything that I need. Breathing out, I practice sharing from my abundance. May you breathe deeply, move freely, labor lovingly and live vibrantly. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing in today's practice. I hope to see you again next week.